Hey guys, so <clears throat> it's been a while and I am busy, busy, busy and that's why I haven't really had any updates. Um, the workshop has been cleaned up here, I was before. See the sidecars there, whoa, the frame is missing, what happened? The table is missing. Well, what happened is that I drove all the things down to the painter and we're now looking at my new workshop spot. Um, but there's something crucial missing. There is an engine missing. Uh, I did a video on respoking the tires. Unfortunately, my computer ran out of space and editing has been a drag, so yeah. But um, more space here, yay. So here is the table. The lights are different in here, so hopefully that's a little bit better. I don't know why it's from grainy. Anyway, so today I'm just going to show you how... I only mounted this loosely, so I will mount it properly. Put on a cylinder so we can get the real uh, timing. Um, yeah. If I have the time, I will also do a change of the tube because silly me I broke the tube when I put on the wheel so new tube needs to be added to my shopping list so this is just gonna be a short video and this is the intro and I will get my my coat off we'll put on some music and yeah see where this is heading this evening all right so I'm back to where I was earlier. The, this cover is where you have the ignition. Right, the new one is here. The old one I should have had. It's over here. So it's a big chunk of wire. So this was sitting here for a typical 1950s style ignition coil of six volts. Super heavy. And I had to get that off to get this off, and then I think I mentioned it in a video, which I haven't released, but when you get in here, that's when you can change this thing. And <clears throat> I had read online that 18 was the best for sidecar. I, uh, sorry, eight, yeah, 18. The original that came off was a 16. Um, I ordered maybe, Maybe a wrong one. We'll see when we come out riding one day. But as it is now, I just wanted to go in here just to say there is no packing here because there's no oil. Just so you know. This thing is a 36, a rather uncommon size. And I was struggling with it for a few days because it was an uncommon size. I had to find the right tools. And then when I found the right tools, which was not a um, a wrench, uh, adjustable wrench, uh, it was a real socket, um, I struggled and struggled and struggled because I was trying to undo it the right way, showed my dad a picture of it and he's like oh the driver's on that side so you have all the forces going this way around so when you accelerate um, the inner uh, axle from the gearbox will go undo this bolt so with his uh, knowledge uh, sharing there I tried to go the other way around and yes this is a lynx thread bolt it also has this um, the, the original bend was very broken so I did not back bend it I just took another side and, and kept to keep it in place but for anyone in the future who wants to do this this is a link thread and it's not stated on. So just now you know. There was probably common knowledge back in the 50s that if it was on this side of the engine, it was link thread. I was not that smart. Okay. Now, I just wanted to, do, 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 do. as you can see here, I have the instruction. The company who makes this uh, kit is called Vape. They're from Czechoslovakia. The original design for this is uh, from uh, Germany, from Berlin, 
Uh, I think it was an ex-employee of, oh, of MZ. Uh, so it's a very nice modern small mini coils, electrical pickup, so you can do ignition um, electrically. And oh yeah, there's its logo. Power Dynamo. So some people can still find Power Dynamo branded ones on eBay and stuff, but uh, this one is brand new from uh, Vape Czechoslovakia. Okay, that was very old. From Czech. Czech. Yes. All right. So just like on modern bikes, uh, so it's a little bit reversed compared to the original. And then on the inside, you have the big magneto. And there's a nice little stamp here for finding the ignition timing. And in the instructions, there's a picture of an RD engine. Same, same stuff. And you can see there's a marking there, but I have not been able to locate a marking here. What I have been, uh, what I have been able to identify is that it should be around here somewhere. Um, I'm gonna do as advised on KR26.DE and move the ignition point to one and a half millimeter before tip, top dead center. The original is four and a half millimeter, but because of modern fuels, electronic ignition, blah, 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 we can move it up to one and a half millimeter. But I just wanted to show you the front sprocket there. It's very large right now, and I'm, I might have to change it one day, but it's not easy as you have to take off the whole thing. A little thing with this is that it comes with, it's actually really nice. It comes with all the electronics and stuff that you need to install on the, oops, on the, frame somewhere but also like very handy little extractor for when you need to pull this off in the future so one important thing is that the note this thing that was there is not supposed to be there because there is no none in here so it's basically able to float but as it is conical you just tighten it in fairly hard and it comes with all the Hardware, so new bolts, even for mounting the the back frame and even for the nice cover on the front. So modern bolts, uh, which is nice. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna pause here and put this back on. And oh yeah, I'll put the cylinder back on as well before I start recording again, just so we can put the anchor on the dynamo and uh, time it correctly. Okay, so cylinders back on. The magneto is back on loosely, well, as loose as I can get it. And then I put a little measuring thing here so I can find one and a half to three and a half millimeters before top dead center. So I will just, I found the top dead center here. So if I go backwards, this is one millimeter, one and a half millimeter. Let's say that's good. So that's the extreme. Actually, I could go three and a half for something like that. But if we do it down here, I think the indicator mark originally was this screw hole. So here you have the, mar the new marking. And if we take the new wheel, there's a little hole here to look through. And if we're lucky, we can mount it. And okay, that's very hard to see. But basically, I can see the line in here. Can you? There. And that's almost, almost like it should be. So. Aligning this is not rocket science, but it is a little bit hard. Like, you still have something to play with afterwards, but uh, around there, that's where I'm gonna put it. So that's one and a half millimeters before top dead center. Okay, so um, kind of assembled without packings. The Electronics have been installed very nice, I like it a lot, and I wanted to do a little video about my wheel. 
where I have been so stupid that uh, I pinched a hole in it when I was assembling it. A typical mistake. I don't want to say rookie because I tried it so many times, but you just get desperate when you put on the tubes in the end. And then you put it in the thing because it would be so nice to just put it in and just get the wheel on. And then you you puncture the, the tube. Annoying because I know I was doing something bad and it was bad. So I was just gonna change the tube, set down here, uh, pulled out the, the old tube, and then I noticed. There. I have a video of me truing this. I have a video of me truing and aligning the whole wheel and everything spot on and just nice. I hope you can see it. Eight spokes have been bent. Oh, but then you didn't true it correctly and they were loose or something. Nope. When, when uh, this was, uh, this room was made, someone moved around my parts and uh, yeah, it obviously had a big dent here. Someone just smashed the wheels into something. And now I have to undo these eight, order some new ones and Yeah, this is going to be my, the end of this video, because uh, I'm upset, sad, and uh, it's election night in America, and yeah, done for tonight, but at least the engine looks fairly complete. Yay! This is going to be a tough one, and I'm looking forward to show a video of how to put that together, because I have no idea what to do. And I bet some other people will as well. Alright. Thanks for tuning in and watching. And see you again soon. Hopefully more regularly now that it's winter and the weather is worse. Bye.